Hello, and welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, let's talk about the subject of self-improvement. And today, I have seven different myths, seven different beliefs that are uh, normal within the self-improvement space. If you've spent any time at all uh, watching videos, uh, watching content, consuming content in the self-improvement space, you're going to find these seven common myths, these seven common beliefs that I'm going to share with you today that I'm going to actually debunk them. I'm actually going to show you that they actually might be hindering your progress versus helping you within your progress in your self-improvement journey. So sit back and relax and get ready as we dive deeper into this world of self-improvement and we debunk some of these beliefs and these myths. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, welcome back. Thank you again for joining me here on the Rich Mind Podcast. First off, let me just express a ton of gratitude. I appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day and your busy schedule to spend it here with me for a few minutes on the podcast. So thank you so much for doing that. But today, let's start talking about the subject of personal development, self-improvement, if you're listening to me or any other types of content within the subject of self-improvement, you're going to hear uh, kind of things that rhyme, right? You're going to hear different things from different people similarly, but basically coming through the same vein, telling you that you need to or you have to do certain things in a certain way in order to see progress in your life. And there are seven things that I've come up with today that I want to share with you that I think might help you in your journey. They've definitely helped me in mine. Uh, if I would have known these earlier in my process, I know that I would have definitely improved quicker, uh, definitely would have seen more progress faster. And that's obviously what I would like for you uh, today moving forward. So let's get into that first myth, first belief number one that I want to try to debunk. And that one is that in order to be successful, you have to wake up at 5 a.m. Now, I don't know if you've heard that one before or not, but that is one that is being spread uh, a lot. And I actually have heard it just recently that that person or one of the persons that, that says that a lot has moved that time frame up to 4 a.m. They're saying that in order to be successful, you need to wake up at now 4 a.m. Whereas it used to be 5 a.m. So pretty soon it's going to be 3 a.m. And sometime pretty soon it's probably going to be no sleep at all. So, so here's what I want to share with you today with that for myself. Now, I personally, I wake up about 6 a.m. for myself and that's been the best uh, situation for myself. But what I would encourage you to do is to figure out what that is for you, meaning you need to determine when your body works best. Some people, their brain is functioning better in the evening or the nighttime versus the daytime. Uh, I'm a little bit more of a morning person, but I'm not a 4, a 5 a.m. morning person. Now I can get up at those times, but for my body to be functioning perfectly or better uh, than the other time, I've discovered that about 6 a.m., between 6 and 7 a.m. is the best time for me to wake up, get my morning routine in, and then get busy. So that's the first myth. I don't want you to think that you have to wake up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 3 a.m., whatever time is best for you. The point is, is that you need to discover what those, what your most productive time is for you. And when you do that, then start being consistent with that time frame is going to be super helpful for you moving forward. All right, then moving on to myth number two or belief number two within the self-improvement space that uh, we want to try to dismiss today. And that second one is that positive thinking is all that you need. All you need to do is sit around and think positive and positive things are going to show up in your life. Now, I will tell you that positive thinking, positive attitude is very important in the process of personal development. It's been very important for me and it will be very important for you as well. But the part and the piece that a lot of times people don't take into account with the positive thinking is they don't realize that they have to take action. Action is required to get anything accomplished. You can't sit around and hope, wish, dream. I talk a lot about journaling. You can get a lot of your ideas going in that process of the creative process, but at some point you need to take action. This podcast would be a great example. I'd been sitting on this idea now for at least 12 months, if not a little bit more of the idea of the podcast. Then at some point I had to take that idea and yes, I was thinking positively about it, but at the same time I needed to take action which then I started the process of getting uh, the podcast created, finding out which equipment I needed, the cameras, the microphones, 
uh, who's going to do the editing, what software I needed. But the point is, is that I took the positive thoughts, positive thinking about the podcast, but then I took action. And that's the piece that a lot of times I think people will neglect is realizing and thinking that all I have to do is sit around and think, hope, wish, dream, which are all fantastic things. You need to be doing all of those, but you need to make sure you're taking action as well. Okay, moving on to myth number three is that you must eliminate all negative thoughts in your life. Now, I emphasize the word must in that statement. And so that's where a lot of times within the self-improvement space, you'll have folks telling you that you need to or must eliminate all negative thinking within your life in order to be successful. And what I will tell you is that that's unrealistic. What I would encourage you to do, and this is what I do, is that you need to learn how to take control of them and manage your thoughts when they become negative. As positive thinking that I'm trying to do and the positive actions that I'm trying to take, negative thoughts still creep into my mind all the time. Uh, Self-doubt, just a lot of the negative things that you get bombarded with on a daily basis. I have them and you will as well. So the idea is that you cannot eliminate them. What I would like for you to encourage you to do today is to learn to take control of them. I talk a lot about triggers on the podcast. And the idea is that when you get triggered, it's going to send you into a spiral of potential, some negative thoughts. Now you can't eliminate them, but what you can do is begin to learn how to control them. And when you do that, you will be much better off. You'll be able to do it faster. Meaning when you get triggered, you'll be able to think through the process, question where they're coming from, and then take action to move forward and realizing that a lot of times those triggers, they aren't true. They're just stories. Their beliefs that you've had about yourself and about your situation that aren't necessarily true. And you can begin to take steps forward into this better purpose, better life for yourself. If you can get away from thinking that you've got to eliminate all negative thoughts and just realize that you just need to learn how to take control of them. And I encourage you to do that just as soon as you possibly can. It takes work. It takes work to do that. But I promise you, if you do the work, you'll definitely see some positive results in your life. Okay, moving on to number four. And that one is, if you follow your passion, you'll never work a day in your life. Now, passion is fantastic. I have passions for different things all the time. But at the same time, you need to find a work environment or some kind of a a career that you can intertwine both your passion and what you're skilled at. Uh, One thing that I love to do is be very creative, which is one thing that I love about creating the podcast. It allows me to sit here and be creative with you. And then obviously the creation in the back end, as far as creating the thumbnails and, and even the production of the podcast or anything like that. Now, passion is great, right? You can have passions for different hobbies. You can have passions for different things you really enjoy doing, right? But at the same time, you need to blend the idea of what's valuable in the marketplace. We all need to learn how to figure out how to make money versus earn money. If you choose to be an entrepreneur Uh, with that though, you could bring in some of those passions, but then make sure that you're paying attention to making sure that you don't get confused thinking that just because you have a passion that all of a sudden the money is going to show up for you. Meaning you've got to make sure that you are using your skills getting more skills. I'm thinking about all the time. What do I need to learn now? Like, for example, the advent of AI, right? AI is increasing all the time. What skills, what tools do I need to put in my toolbox to be able to become more valuable in the marketplace? And when I do that, blended with my passion, that's where the sweet spot comes in. And that's what I would encourage you today is blend the idea of the passion that you have For myself, as I mentioned, creativity is something I'm super passionate about, but then mixing that in with my skill set and where can I work to be creative, but then it's also going to be valuable in the marketplace where then I can charge a fee for the different services that I provide. Okay, number five is that self-discipline is the key to success. Now, discipline, you need to have discipline. Uh, I'm not saying you do not, but to think that only self-discipline is all you need is would be where the myth comes in. And that's where I want to debunk that today. So discipline is very important in the process of personal development and self-improvement. But to think that it's the end all be all would be uh, not accurate. You need to make sure you have have some compassion for yourself as well. Meaning uh, we're all gonna have good days. We're all gonna have bad days. 
Now, I'm not saying you need to give yourself days off or time off away from things when you should be getting things done. But at the same time, don't beat yourself up over if you're having a bad day. We have a bad day. The point is, is that you need to work through that the best you possibly can, but then get back to it as fast as you possibly can through the discipline. Keep acting as if you need to keep moving forward towards these goals that you've got set for yourself. Uh, and discipline, as I mentioned, is very important, but at the same time, it is not necessarily the end all be all in terms of for your success and in your self-improvement. Uh, just a blend of some compassion for yourself with some self-discipline and you'll be surprised how far you'll be able to go much, much quicker. Okay, number six, and I've heard this so many times when I was first starting out in my journey and uh, I just, yeah, it, it's interesting. I've heard this so many times that you've got to set big, audacious goals. And that's the only way to succeed out there in the world and in the marketplace. And that right now for me, that's, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's accurate. Now, I'm not saying you can't think big, uh, do big things. But the point is, is that if you think too far beyond your comfort zone, so we all have a comfort zone. And we need to be pushed beyond our comfort zone. But if you go too far, too fast, you're going to quickly self-sabotage yourself. That's been my experience is anytime I've pushed myself way too far, way too fast, setting this big audacious goals, I've quickly self-sabotaged myself to the point where then I don't accomplish anything. So I'll use this podcast as an example. Again, when I first launched the podcast, I had a goal to reach a hundred episodes. And I'm beyond that now. I'm approaching 160 some odd, which, which is great. I'm grateful for that. But the point is, is that I didn't think that I was going to have 500 episodes and you know multiple guests, right? I was going to uh, get paid to do uh, so many different things with the podcast. I didn't set myself up with an expectation of something that I would be afraid to then begin st taking the first steps, right? So my suggestion is to yes. You can have big visions, big goals, but don't get hung up on the idea of, well, how in the world am I going to accomplish those things when all you need to do is just start off with the small baby steps. Think of just a few things that you need to do today that will get you towards that big vision, but at the same time, don't get buried thinking that, oh my gosh, how am I going to accomplish anything of those big goals or big visions that I have for myself when really all you need to do is just start with step one. So like I said, with the podcast, I needed to come up with a name. So I came up with a name. Next thing you know, I needed to figure out, okay, do I like the thumbnail, the imagery, the branding. Those were the, the things I needed to focus on. I didn't worry, need to worry about episode number 100 uh, or 200 or 300 or which guest I was going to get on. Those are the things I, wouldn't, I wasn't focused on when I first started. And that would be my suggestion for you today is don't get buried under these big audacious goals until you have uh, you know, an idea of the first few steps that you need to take. So start there with the small steps. And I promise you, if you continue to go forward with the small steps, you will reach those big goals. And that's what I want for you today. Okay, last but not least, number seven. And number seven, this is a good one. If you've hung along with me so far through this episode, I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully this has been super valuable. I would love for you to replay these uh, seven myths and just really internalize them and see how you can have them be an impact in your life moving forward. But number seven is that the idea that you have to be perfect in order to succeed. Now, perfectionism is the killer to accomplishing anything. There's nothing perfect about anything that we do. Uh, a lot of times when we go through the school systems at, in whatever environment that we're in, you know, we're, we're taught that, you know, you can pass or fail, right? And when you're out here doing your thing in the world of self-improvement, you've got to be able to be flexible. There's a lot of gray area in what I discuss with, right? Anytime I'm having a discussion about self-improvement with somebody, you need to live as much as you possibly can in that gray area. You're going to have good times. You're going to have bad times, right? And it's that gray area, that time in between is where you need to spend most uh, of, of your time. Thinking that you need to be perfect, thinking that the only way to succeed is to be perfect, 100% you're setting yourself up for failure. And that's where I would encourage you today that if you struggle with perfectionism, thinking that everything has to be perfect before you can take your first steps, that is, that is not correct. You need to take action, messy action. I actually had a conversation uh, on a podcast episode here recently with Kevin Palmieri, 
And we talked about early stage entrepreneurship and how you need to take messy action at first. In this episode, I've mentioned several times about the podcast. When I first got started, I had no idea what I was doing. When the first time I hit record on uh, the computer here, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know if anybody would show up. I didn't know if it would do well. And obviously, I'm trying to improve every time I do hit record again. But the idea is that I took messy action. I got started. I didn't worry about the end result. I didn't worry about being perfect. And that's what I would encourage you to do today is if you are struggling with perfectionism, you need to try to get beyond that and realize that there's nothing perfect in this world. It's just a matter of, of doing your best, showing up, and just delivering as much value as you possibly can uh, to whoever you're trying to serve. It can be your family members. It can be your customers. It can be your work environment. It can be whatever you are working with at that moment. But don't get stuck thinking that you have to be perfect in order to succeed because that is absolutely not true. All right, there you have it. The seven myths or the seven beliefs in the self-improvement space that I wanted to try to debunk today and try to give you some encouragement of the way I look at things and how I try to improve my life. So hopefully you found those valuable. So let's uh, just summarize them real quick. That way you can just think about them, right? Maybe possibly journal about them after this episode and sit down and try to think about how you can implement some of these ideas into your life as well. So number one, remember, was you don't need to necessarily wake up at 5 a.m. to be super successful. Remember, you need to find your productivity rhythm is for you. Mine, I love waking up about 6 a.m. Yours, it can be whatever is best for you. You need to determine what that is. But make sure that you don't fall into that trap thinking that 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. is the only way to succeed because it's absolutely not. Make sure, number two, that you're taking your positive thoughts and you're pairing them with positive actions. That's crucial to success. You need to make sure you're taking positive actions with your positive thinking, and that's going to get you the results that you're looking for. Number three, that you manage your negative thoughts and not eliminate. As I mentioned, you will get triggered. I get triggered still all the time. By managing those negative thoughts allows me then to make better decisions moving forward, getting control of them. And that's what I would suggest that you to do today is to be aware of them, but manage them and don't be managed by them. That's the secret as well. So number four, make sure that yes, you need to be passionate about what you're doing, but don't fall in the trap of thinking that just because you're passionate about something is the only thing you should be doing in order to be successful out there in the marketplace. Balance some skill sets along with your passion. And that's where the sweet spot of being successful will come for you. Make sure number five, that you balance self-discipline with self-compassion. You need to be compassionate for yourself just as well as being disciplined. Understanding that you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. But the idea is that, yes, you need to show up whenever you're scheduled to do whatever you need to get done for that day, moving forward with whatever uh, goal you've got set for yourself. But at the end of the day, make sure that you're not beating yourself up over something that, you know, may or not be true in that moment. As far as uh, feeling bad about yourself, about an action that you did take that maybe it didn't quite land the way you wanted it to, or it didn't, uh, the final result wasn't what you were looking for. Be compassionate with yourself just as much as discipline, and that will definitely help you move forward. So number six, make sure you're breaking your big audacious goals into smaller steps. Don't get caught thinking that the only way to succeed is by thinking big with these big, huge goals. Now, I'm not saying you can't have big visions, remember, but make sure you're breaking them down into smaller pieces, smaller actionable steps you can start doing right away. And last but not least, number seven, embrace the imperfections. Life is not perfect in any way, shape, or form. And if you're out there trying to succeed, definitely within your self-improvement, you're going to come up against roadblocks, some stumbles. The idea is to make sure that you do not allow them to keep you from moving forward. Embrace the negativity. Sometimes the negative experiences that you have are just learning experiences. They're not good. They're not bad. They just are. They're just experiences. And you need to learn to embrace them just as much as you can about the positive ones as well. And if you do that, your self-improvement will skyrocket, I promise. All right, there you go. The seven myths tried to get busted here on the Rich Mind Podcast. I appreciate your time and attention. So if you found this message valuable, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd share it with your family and friends. I'm trying to share and spread the the message of the Rich Mind Podcast as far and as wide as I possibly can. And if you wouldn't mind heading over to your podcast platform of choice and leaving me a review, letting me know what you think about the podcast, I would greatly appreciate that as well. 
So go out there, focus on your self-improvement. It's so important that if you're going to achieve anything in life, your mindset is got to be one of the things that you're focusing on tremendously all the time. But what I will tell you is that if you focus on the things that I discussed today and not necessarily take everything that you've been told as gospel, that you've that's exactly how you have to get it done and realize that there's some flexibility there. I talked about kind of living in the gray area of knowing that, yes, you, there's times to push real hard and then there's times to pull back and then just having some flexibility within that your schedule. But showing up, and doing the best that you possibly can. Understanding that perfectionism is a killer. And that's what I suffer with sometimes for myself. But go out there. Have a fantastic day. I hope you found this message valuable today. I appreciate your time. Have a fantastic day. I look forward to coming back to you with the next episode of the Rich Mind Podcast here very shortly. And until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.